you talked also in your memoir about sort of the the going over to sort of the white part of town in yes, Durham yes. and reading Vogue magazine. Yes, yes. And I mean, did you see a distinction between the the way that sort of people presented themselves on the white side of town versus where you were living? I didn't even notice living? it was the white side of town. I didn't even think about it until one day, the students at Duke threw rocks out of the car at me one Sunday afternoon. I used to always go on Sunday to the East Campus of Duke University, which had a magazine stand. And I was so naive, I just loved the process of going, walking across the railroad tracks to that side of town to get the Vogue magazine. In those days, it came out twice a month, January 1, January 15. So that was a process that I loved. I would also buy the New York Times and any other magazine that had fashion. And so I didn't really think that I was walking in the white part of town. I didn't even notice the people in that part of town. I, was, I had a vision, I had a single tunnel vision. I was going to that magazine store to get the Vogue. And I was reading Vogue at an early age and Vogue was the escape moment for me. Vogue, I read every caption, I read every, every I can almost, you can talk about Vogue in the 60s and I can tell you what month it went. <laughs> Or the captions, I read the captions about men in Vogue, Camille Duhay was the editor. I read all the boutique pages. I read everything and I loved the Vogue. It was my escape world into another world that was beyond my world at home. I loved Vogue. And <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it start to shape how you dressed yourself? Oh, absolutely, it shaped everything. I mean, I was the only child, and I grew up in my grandmother's house, and she gave me free reign of the house. So she had an extra room. It was a very modest house. Sometimes we almost froze in the winter because we didn't have central heating. And I remember we just had five blankets on the bed, and my grandmother loved the cold bedroom, but I did not. But um, <laughs> I remember she gave this room, and she had it painted pink. And I realized it was a scaparelli pink when I got up very sophisticated and started reading things, like Elsa the Wolf. But she had the room painted pink. It could have been her sewing room. She gave it over to me. I, she bought me a sofa and a desk. And my father bought me a typewriter. And I made that room my own. And I used to read everything. So of course, I was reading esoteric books and things from the library. I'd go to the Durham Public Library. I was reading John Fairchild, the late, you know, John Fairchild, yeah. Women's Wear Daily. He wrote a great book called The Fashionable Savages. And that was my Bible in high school. I was running around in junior, I was in 11th grade, screaming and running around, CC gas, CC gas, <laughs> Gloria Vanderbilt, Gloria Vanderbilt. And did anyone know what you were talking no, about? I, think, I explained who these people were. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, one of my, the, the person that was the most, most uh, moment of perfection was Ann Bibby, who was the homecoming queen. And her mother dressed her beautifully to be the homecoming queen in a beautiful boucle tweed coat and matching dress. Very, very, very chic and very elegant. And I used to always talk to her about a season guest. And I just recently met her l last year after 50 years. And we had lunch. And she said, you remember you used to go around talking about CeCe Guest and her man Boshe suits in high school? I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it did, it did absolutely motivate me, Vogue. But then I remember reading in Vogue, somewhere I may have seen a picture of Lady Ottoline Morel. Ottoline Morel was a very high English aristocrat and an eccentric. And I must say, Ottoline Morel, mm -hmm. Cecil Beaton, the English eccentrics all inspired me. Everything that I read, the literature of Leslie Blanche, The Wild Shores of Love, so all this was totally giving me inspiration, and I just went wild with my moments of, you know, this is who I am. I, I remember when I went off to college, I was wearing um, purple rouge on my cheeks <laughs> because Naomi Sims was in vogue wearing purple rouge. <laughs> I was wearing curtain tassels. And I hadn't even seen Gone with the Wind by Scarlett Harris. <laughs> <laughs> but I was wearing silk curtain tassels, which the idea came from the Vogue, the boutique pages, the men in Vogue. And I had beautiful tuxedo shirts, beautiful pleat fronted tuxedo shirts that I saved my money and I bought in Chapel Hill at a very chic store. And I would wear these black silk rope tassels and I'd go to class and the people, the professors would just look at me and they'd say, well, what is this? And I said, it's just my look for today. And I'd wear... <laughs> I'd wear capes to the floor. I had a beautiful black rubberized policeman's cape that I bought in some junk shop. And I used to read Vogue, and then it would inspire me to decorate my room. And then I would actually, believe it or not, I'm very good with my hands, and I would actually upholster my chairs inspired by things I'd read in Vogue.